Hey, it's Sean from Tested, uh, back with another show and tell of uh, one of my many hobbies. <laughs> Today we're doing clocks. Um, I have long been a fan of clocks and watches, uh, particularly mechanical uh, uh, mechanisms. And I kind of went down a rabbit hole over the last few months of the pandemic and started collecting uh, interesting clock mechanisms. And so I thought we'd take a look at a few today um, and, and, and look at how they work and uh, what I've been doing with them. So a lot of you may be familiar, this is a, a pretty, you know, uh, standard throwback to the 80s, 70s and 80s, the uh, flip clock. Uh, you see them a lot, you even see the, the flip mechanisms like on giant like train and bus uh, depot billboards, like that type of thing. And I just, I just feel like there's such a neat way of working. And, um, and what I've been doing is buying up these kind of old ones that are kind of ugly on the outside, but pretty on the inside. And I've been making uh, new housings for them to show them off. So, so let's, let's take a look at probably the one that most people are familiar with, uh, the flip clock. So voila, the, the insides, we've taken this kind of homely yellowed old clock and and my plan is to rehouse this so let's put the knob on here so i can kind of show how it works um it's it's a neat mechanism it basically had these little flip panels that just flip down as the hour passes it's it's so effective <laughs> and simple but such an elegant awesome mechanism and what surprised me about this is the, these came uh like became prominent in probably the 60s. Japan started making a lot of these flip clocks. But I, I was looking into the history for the show and tell today, and it turns out the first flip clock is actually documented in 1890, which is crazy because that's that's when you're thinking of like big or uh, elaborate, you know, intricate scroll work clocks with like enameled faces. And that's pretty much what this clock was, except it did use a flip mechanism very similar to uh, what is here. And they didn't, they didn't really catch on. And um, so the tech was there and the and the method was there, just nobody really did much with it until uh, particularly Japan started really cranking these out in the uh, 60s. And they would all be s similar setups to this. Um, sometimes uh, the the little tiles be a little bit different arrangement or, or bigger arrangements. And uh, they very often had a little tiny neon lamp to light them up, very similar to uh, the Nixie clock here. So these are uh, neon tubes. And this is a little neon light that would uh, uh, light them up at night a lot of the times. And and just, you take this like kind of ho-hum homely on the outside clock and you get in the inside and then you, you rehouse them is at least what I've been doing because I really appreciate actually seeing the mechanism work. Um, and there are, uh, don't get me wrong, there are some of these clocks that are beautiful on the outside and really kitschy looking and very, very collectible. And I've been trying to pick up cheap ones that are are cool on the inside. So flip clock, um, we got another one here, very similar. And often they're in that like horrible faux wood grain housing. Um, and a lot of them are really beat up on the outside. So it just makes sense to like take what's neat on the inside and put it on the outside like I've done here. And basically I've just gotten uh, a uh, acrylic display case and uh, I laser cut uh, vent holes and cord holes because the one thing with these clocks is they tend to run really hot. And uh, I was worried about them um, uh, getting enough uh, air circulation. So I did a little laser cutting and that turned out well. Um, but this is a good follow-up. This guy that I just picked up, this is a, um, uh, actually, this precedes the flip clocks, but you don't see these quite as often and not many people are as familiar with these. These are cyclometers uh, because they work on these spinning wheels. So kind of similar to a flip clock, but, but even simpler. And the neat thing about these is uh, they're all just geared so that each wheel has a little catch that will drive the next wheel. So as the hours and minutes pass, it will automatically catch onto the next one and advance it at the appropriate time. And um, these guys were made like, like starting in the 30s. And uh, they're made like from the 30s up through at least the 70s and 80s. And they're, they were all in different kinds of housing. So this one came in a really ugly, uh, uh, actually wooden case that was all beat up. Uh, so I took it out, did a little work on it. 
Um, it's interesting because they have these, these flywheels that you can see spinning. Normally these have a cover on them, but I've taken it off so that you can see the mechanism. And uh, a lot of times they're seized up from years of sitting on the shelf. So uh, I had to do a little relubrication, a little oiling in strategic places with some sewing machine oil um, and did a little cleanup on the, these. But otherwise this mechanism is pretty straightforward. The problem you run into with these guys is this motor here is it's sealed. It actually is, is soldered shut the whole way around the perimeter. So if something goes wrong in the gearbox, you're, you're kind of in trouble. But a lot of times just a little clean and lubrication will uh, get these guys going again. And the neat thing about the cyclometers is the exact same uh, Numicron, which is a brand name mechanism, was used in dozens of manufacturers' clocks. So this is from a different manufacturer. This is yet another manufacturer, but all the same uh, Numicron mechanism inside with the same exact motor. Uh, and then the really interesting thing is to set these, a lot of times you literally just reach through the face <laughs> and turn them by hand. And um, some of them would have holes in the bottom that you could like reach up and, and set them as well. So this guy, I haven't decided if I'm gonna paint the housing or uh, put it in a plastic case, but um, I think that they're neat, neat clocks. But my favorite um, out of this style, like th this air of clocks, is this crazy guy that I found um, that runs on film strips. I had no idea. I thought this was a flip clock when I bought it because it's just the black and white face. And when I got it, it wasn't running and I took it apart. I was like, whoa, this is, I've never seen anything like this. Just continual plastic loops. There are actual little sprocket wheels in here that engage with the teeth and then move it around. And I, the, the thing that I really like about it is because I have a, a film and TV background and it runs just like a film camera with the sprockets and the teeth, uh, which I think is just so cool. And uh, this guy, uh, what you'll run into a lot is a lot of the little tiny plastics uh, may age and get brittle and then snap off. So this had uh, the wheel mechanism that's going from the motor uh, basically just snapped off. So I, I just took it apart, cleaned it, put a little screw in place of that peg and it started driving the whole mechanism. And the neat thing is this is also backlit uh, so you can see the strips at night. But this is one of my favorites. And um, uh, the, the other thing that I didn't realize is how that these often, uh, often worked is they, uh, a lot of them were alarm clocks and they have a, um, basically a, piezoelectric buzzer in them that would uh, act as the alarm mechanism. Right, uh, I think it's cool. So um, yeah, so so these are worth picking up. You can get them at like Goodwill and thrift stores and eBay. And a lot of times they might need a little cleanup or work, but they can often, often be made to work. So, um, you know, check them out, flip clocks film strip clocks, and the Numicron cyclometers. And uh, we'll come back and take a look at some of these other oddballs that I have in the collection uh, next show and tell.